Hello guys and welcome to part 5 of our little Lego minifigures tutorial. Uh, in this part we are going to unwrap our model. So let's flip over to 3D Studio Max here and we will see uh, where we left off last time. We just created the last of our wee assets there. We went to perspective mode, far better, there we go. Um, and yeah, we're going to start unwrapping this guy. So I think what we'll do, we'll just grab this, 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 and this, and we will just hide you for now, hide selection. Uh, just to do a bit of housekeeping here, might as well get it out of the way. Uh, I'm going to grab everything, and I, I'm just going to move it towards our origin point. So we can see here, um, this little black line on our grid, that's our origin point. I'm just going to drag. I'm not going to be too precise with this, just get it kind of roughly in position. There we go. And uh, what I'll do is I'll raise him up so that his feet are on just about touching the ground. If I actually go to my left view, hit L. Yeah, we can see that's just about touching there. And that's perfect. So press P for perspective view to get back in there. Now, one thing I noticed is that when in the last video, if you watched the last video, you will see me exporting it out. And open it up in Substance Painter, etc., just for um, testing the export. Um, we were always seeing them from behind, we're always seeing them backwards. So, what I'm going to do is go select everything and rotate them 180 degrees. See if I can actually select the correct axis here. If I zoom out, get a better hold of the gizmo. There we go, 180. And now it might not make any difference, but just in case, just good practice, we'll do the same thing we done last time. Come here, just reset or transform on our scale, just so that it, uh, we don't export and it still exports and facing the other way or anything like that. So there we go. Uh, now we just have to unwrap this guy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open my material editor uh, first of all. Uh, I'm going to choose a blank material. And we will just call this uh, Lego uh, Lego character. Will do lovely. Uh, I'll put a little underscore in here just for I'm pedantic like that. Uh, and we will select all of our models, select that, and just hit this little assign material and selection. That'll do everything at once. I'll just hit that. We don't really need to do this. It's just grey, but this will show any textures that were in there. So now we have one material on this whole guy, or girl, whatever we minifigure you're actually making. Um, if I wanted to, now we're going to take this into Substance Painter. Now I think Lego minifigure is quite a simple wee character. Um, we're going to be putting stickers and things and a wee face on them and stuff like that. If you really, really wanted to, you want to get really, really high texture resolution, what we could do is we could have, say, the top half of the body on one material and uh, the bottom half of the body on another material and then when we bring that into Substance Painter we'll get us two separate texture sets um, so we get two different uh, we can use two image files for the whole texture just give us more texture resolution I'm not going to do that I think one will be fine um, but that option is there if you're a more advanced user you know what you're doing you can if you want um, use two materials instead of one um, and the only reason I'm doing this here now at all is that uh, if we if we just left it as was without a material on it and our texture sets and Substance Painter, it would just come up as default material. I'll apply a material to it and just call it default material. Um, but that always annoys me, so I like to know what my material actually is. So I just, I just basically basic grey material on here and get a name. And that name you'll see in the next video carries over that Lego character name. Um, but I'm rambling, so let's get to it. So what we want to do here, we're going to throw everything just onto the one UV map. So we've got everything selected here. Go to our modify panel. And we will just scroll down, unwrap UVW. And you will see our little green scenes up here on our model, but they might not be the green scenes that we want. So let's open our UV editor. And this goes up really, really small. And because we have multiple objects selected here, what Max is doing is it's taking every one of them, giving it the full texture space, but superimposing them right on top of each other. So that's not what we want. 
Now, what we really want to do is we could, if we want to, just grab everything, just select everything at the top of the whole model, just go mapping. Uh, we can do flatten mapping if we want. And there we have our unwrap. Actually, that's not too bad, you know. That's actually quite a good tight wee unwrap. Um, if you are not confident in your 3D model or you want to do this quickly, you could just do that. Just mapping, flatten mapping, that's what you'll get. And we'll take a set of substance painter. We can work with that. That's totally fine. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're here to learn. So we're going to just spend a little bit of time uh, looking at a few ways how to unwrap these. Now, in my other series, my other game asset series, we have unwrapped and I've shown you this. So if you look at any of my other videos, I'll not be having you haven't seen before. But if this is your first series of mine that you've watched, um, stick around. You might pick up a few techniques on unwrapping. Like I say, we could leave that just as is, and it'll work fine in Substance Painter, but we might as well learn how to make a nice unwrap. So what we do is we have to do one object at a time. We'll start on the torso, because the torso is going to be the simplest. I'm just go back to top level, and just select the torso, and what I'll do is I will go to right click, hide on selected, just to leave this. So what I'm going to do, I've got these little green uh, seams here, which are the ones that Max automatically threw in there for me. But I want to make my own and unwrap this exactly as I want. So let me see, I'm going to go into my sub object mode. I'm going to select everything. And now there's a little option here ignore back facing. I talked about this in the last video as well. This is activate it. I want to deactivate that. And that's why when I selected everything, I did not select these back faces. So in regular modeling, it is unchecked by default, but in unwrapping, it's checked by default. So there we go. That's everything selected. And what I want to do, just to get rid of those seams, I'm just going to click this quick planar map button. Now you look at this little wireframe rectangle here. We we'll click that. And what this does is it basically unwraps it based on the direction of that. But what it's really doing, what's more important for us, is it is um, getting rid of all those green seams. So there's no unwrap on this at the minute. So what I'm going to do is manually unwrap it. And how am I going to do that? I am going to... Wait, I want this actually. I might have just the front face and the back face. Um, yeah, I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to open my UV editor and just have it sitting beside me because there's a couple of tools I want in the UV editor that I, I don't have out here, but it's actually easier to select everything in my regular model here. So I'm going to go to edge mode first of all. Uh, I'm going to double click on this edge and yep, that selects around everything that I want to a point. Um, I am going to select this front face of the model and I'm also going to just select you, you, and you. There we go. So with those selected, what I'm going to do is here on my UV window, I have this little option here under explode where it says break. What this does is this basically creates our green seams for us. Just click break. You see it turned purple there because they're still selected. If I unselect that, you'll see the green seams in there. Now if I go back to my edge mode, and I also select my uh, element mode, which means I'll select an entire UV island, or at least it should. Oh, I might have to select in here, actually. Oh, that's a pain. Uh, how do we select it when we're looking front on? Do, 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 do. Okay, so if I select this. Okay, not the most elegant way of doing it, but select this. And actually what I also should do, just to make sure these snip out flat, I'll go back to my edge mode. I'm just going to put a wee snip in here. Oops. And a wee snip in here. I just hit that break button again. Uh, so now if I go back and select all of these, what I can do is I can move these over into their own little separate chunk. And I can work between a few buttons here. I'm going to try the straight and selection. Yeah, that's not, uh, well, it's not great, but I'll do. Hit U. U. Do, do, do. 
don't really like any of these results to be honest with you. Um, let me see, mapping, unfold mapping. That's terrible. That's not what I want at all. No, I don't like that unfold. Uh, the trouble with using the mapping, flat mapping, unfold mapping, etc., is it creates its own green scenes. So when I've done that, whoops, it's created extra scenes here for me. You can see this one and this one. It's not what I want at all. So I'm going to control Z, undo that. What way do I want to do this now? Um, nom, 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 nom. Do I want a pill? Quick pill? Yeah, quick pill's okay, actually. Quick pill. Uh, pill actually uses a different set of um, seams. Uh, they'd be blue instead of green. It's a kind of a different system. Uh, better for organic stuff like faces or animal pelts, things like that. Um, but that's actually given an okay result as is. So I'm, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to leave that. But what I will do is it's turned sideways here, as you can see. So I'm going to scroll up and just hit this rotate button. And there we go. It agrees. Uh, and what I'll do is I'm going to repeat that on the back side. That exact same thing. Uh, go to my edge mode. I'll deactivate my full element mode here. Double click this. You all the way around. Click you. Click you. And this little guy here. Uh, tiny little snip in here just to flatten it out. Reason being, this is kind of a, a raised corner or a, a fold of sorts that won't flatten out easily unless we add a little snip. Same way if you're trying to flatten out a cereal box, you have to sort of cut all the corner flaps and things just to make sure it stays flat. So there we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and break. Break that again. Element mode, face mode. Can I select these? Uh, so no, I can't actually say that. You'll notice there it looks like we're actually looking on it vertically downwards, so we can't actually see it. But what I can do is move it out of the way and stretch some of these other polys that are attached to it. And then when I select them, now I can move the whole thing out of the way. I want to do the same thing. Uh, I'll just hit this one once or twice just to see what result we get. Not really very good, but we'll hit pull, and we can see it's given us a very similar one to what we had before. Uh, it's not quite lined up 100% perfectly. Uh, maybe what happens if I hit relax now? Not great, not great, not great. It's funny because sometimes if you click these buttons a couple of times, it gives you a slightly different or a slightly more refined result. In fact, you can see there, I've hit it again. It's turned it completely upside down. Just from having clicked through it a few times, it's just sort of like wobbled the mesh a bit that we get a different result. Depending on how it starts, will affect how it finishes. So clicking between the, the straight and the relax until flat, and then the quick pull. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite happy with this. What I'll do is I will turn this uh, twice now. So these these should line up more or less the same. Yeah, they're grand. They're okay. I'm not going to leave them on top of each other though. I'm going to bring this one to the side. Uh, now we can start just taking these wee side pieces and top pieces. What I'll do is I will take uh, I'll take you. And I'll take you, hold control, click, and select both. Just break those. It gives me this wee top surface. And what I'll do is I will take the bottom here and the bottom here. Break that. And now all I want to do is take each of these separate islands. You can see everything select, uh, separated by green seams now. So uh, if we take this top one, for example, take you there. Just move that out of the way. No, we don't really want to do that. That's not good. Now, because this is just three polygons in a line, if I hit straighten, it gives us, pardon me, a nice straight result. So these ones didn't straighten out because we've got kind of one, two, three polys in a line, but then these other polys kind of off to the side, straighten doesn't work quite as well. But what we can do now is, you'll see the proportions aren't quite right in this. Uh, this middle poly, and then these two polys that should be tiny are actually massive on the side. So what we're going to do is, uh, just by the element mode, just select all three of them, go hit this quick relax button. And this can take a few seconds uh, sometimes, but you see there what it's done is, it's just reset this back to its base shape. 
So it's as if we've had like something elastic and we've just let it relax back to its natural shape. So perfect, what we'll do is we'll move it up. And now just looking, comparing these two, that size should be the same width as that size. But it's not, this one's way bigger. Now we could manually resize all of these, but that can be a bit of a pain in the bum. So what we're going to do is we select everything, uh, all three of these, and there's a little button down here, rescale elements. If we click this, pop, you'll see it now sets everything correct size to each other, relative to each other. So that matches much better. So we'll have to do that for the other elements here. But we'll take this side guy and we will hit uh, straight and selection. And we'll just move you out of the way there. And we'll hit relax. So that's not too bad. Go around the other side. Straight and selection. And relax. Now this one's taking a few seconds. It's a bit funny the way it works sometimes. Um, it's literally a single polygon. Oh, it's frozen on me. Fantastic. Let me check my OBS is still working. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. Come on. There we go. So what I will probably need to do is rotate this one way, rotate this the other way. Could be upside down, I'm not even too sure. But what I can do is we go into edge mode and select one of these edges. Uh, is it showing me? No, oh, deactivate on the mode, sorry. Select one of these edges. Ah, so that's the bottom edge there. So I need to flip this one. And this one is the top edge. So this one's okay because the top edge is aligned with the top edge. But this one I just need to, uh, well, I'll select the polys easier. I'll just, again, flip twice. And that way they're both the right way up. Uh, and that just leaves us with this bottom face here, which is actually in decent shape as it is already because we're... Look at our little grey uh, projection, or sorry, grey, a little uh, yellow projection direction box here. It's facing straight down onto that flat plane. So this is actually uh, unwrapped nicely. But what I'll do is I'll just hit straighten elements anyway and just relax anyway. Just get them correct. Why did you do that? And I will flip this one horizontally. And what I'll do is I'll just go. Uh, where do I want to go? Where's my little button? Rescale elements down the bottom here. And pop, rescale. Everything is now in scale with itself. So I'll bring you over here. And just tidy these up a little bit. And so this one here, this one here. And there is our torso, nice and unwrapped. Now, Probably more likely I'll place this one down here, or I will change these a little bit. But what I want to do now is I don't want to place these right back into my texture square just yet. I'm going to drag these and push them way out here because I still have all my other objects to unwrap. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll take each of them in turn and unwrap them and place them out. And then I'll rescale everything together and pull it back on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just demonstrate one or two more objects. Uh, right click here, top level, unhide all. Uh, I might demonstrate, say, an arm and maybe one of these leg pieces just to show you how to unwrap them. And then I'm going to do the rest off camera because it'll be the same tools over again. You don't need to see that. So you can just repeat this at your leisure. So we'll select this one. Hide on selected. Open the editor again. And we can see that this object here, uh, that basic unwrap we had, not too bad there. But we'll give this a nicer, we'll give this a nicer, we'll give this a peel actually. I'll show you how the peel function works. Um, so what I want to do is, what do I want to do? I'm sure I took a bit of a brain freeze there. Okay, go to edge mode. No, go to uh, face mode. Uh, select everything. So we need to get rid of that basic um, projection that we put on there just by applying our own quick planar map. Click that. Gets rid of all those seams. 
and you can see the effect that's had there, it's just sort of projecting it right down flat. And what we'll do is we'll cut in the seams that we want. Uh, let me see. Edge mode now. And what I want to do is select this little ring here. Oops, I'm going to try to select the right one. Not you. Hold Alt to deselect that. Hold Control to select around this ring. Now, it's not a perfect edge ring, so unfortunately my edge and loop tool won't work. But if I just select around all of that, I think it might have inadvertently selected some. Yep. All on the other side here. Just make sure they're deselected. And I will hit my break key. And what I'm going to do is I'll just break it here as well. And because this was the bottom of our original box, we can double click and get just a few of those edges. There we go. Uh, break that. And what I want to do is just put one seam down the inside of the arm. Now, when we're breaking our seams here, again, it's not too big a deal in the era of Substance Painter where it can sort of paint directly on the mesh perfectly. Um, but good habit to get into is where we're cutting things and where we have our seams, we want to hide them. Uh, and the place where that seam is least likely to be seen in our little Lego man is on the inside of the arm, kind of under the armpit. So there we go. And what am I looking for? Yes, little break button. Click that again. So now you can see we've got this nice set of seams here. This is going to come off. Uh, the cuff is going to come off. And the arm itself is just going to be one big piece that unfolds out. Uh, what I could do, well, let's just see what kind of pull we get from this, first of all. And I'm going to select you, I'm going to select this guy. And I'll move you over there, which is isn't what we want, but just because I need to select you in here. Straight in selection. And it's funny how that came out. Just straightened up in the original square. We'll hit relax. There we are. Lovely. Do the exact same thing for the bottom. Just uh, drag you a little bit just to see the other polys to select them. Straighten. Relax. For some reason it wants to take a few seconds. It may just be because of the projecting direction. We'll just let that chug away there for a second. I'll continue to ramble and talk crap. Try and fill up the silence. Try and get rid of that dead air. And 15 seconds later, there we go. Again, it's kind of scaled it wrongly, but we'll not worry about that. And now what we can do is we can select this whole single big element here. And because this is a complex shape, if I hit straight in selection, it will just not like it at all. That does not look good. Look at these kind of crisscrossing lines. Not good at all. Actually, just for a laugh, relax until flat. Actually, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. I wonder if I straighten this now. Oh, no. Um, but let's try and see what if we do a quick peel instead. Peel is coming out just a little bit, maybe straighter, a little bit nicer. Um, so you can see because it's a curvy shape. Uh, can I get away with that? Can I... Do it? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I like it. It's okay. So what we'll do is we will turn that around. I uh, will select this guy as well. I'll select this guy. I will just try a little rescale elements. And that's got everything that should be. Move you up here and move you up here to take up as little space as possible. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just move this down to a different area than the one before. So the torso was up here. And we'll move this arm down here. And if we go top level, unhide all. What I'll do now is if I select everything that has that UV and open the UV again, you'll see the effect this is starting to have now where we have this arm down here and the torso up here. So that's what we want to do. Just take each piece as is and move it out and unwrap it as we want. And at the end, we will rescale them all together. In fact, let me just show you. Let me just demonstrate. Oops. Move this up towards that. And now if we rescale both of these together, it does nothing. Why is that doing nothing? 
maybe I have to have everything. Maybe it won't work. Maybe it won't work in separate objects. Okay, never mind. Um, but you know, we'll just leave you here. Maybe, maybe I can just manually adjust it. Maybe you are the right size, actually. Oh yeah, no, you're you're about the right size. Yeah, come out the right size anyway. That's okay. Um, and again, I'm just eyeballing there. You can see that, that the length of the arm is just less than the length of the torso. So that looks about right there. So probably that's why it wouldn't have made change much. So, okay, let me see. Top level. I will do... I'll do the leg. I'll do the leg. Hang on, selected. And I'll show you a couple of tips that will be very similar to the uh, what you would do with the the hand because that's kind of that curved cylinder shape as well. So we'll take this guy and we will open our UV editor. Go to our polygon mode. Select everything again. Quick projection map. Quick sorry. Quick planar map. Just so that we can get rid of any pre-existing green seams. And now what I'm going to do is I'll put a little seam right here at the top. Uh, I've got my edge mode because again this is going to be hidden by the hip. We're likely not going to see that. We'll break that there. I'm going to double click here. And that's going to break this round there. That's okay. I'm going to break. And we'll break to here. And then I'm going to continue. What I want to have is maybe four pieces. Uh, the entire left flank here, the entire right flank, and then I'll do a kind of a front and back section. So I'll just go around these edges. Get you, get you, get you. Um, and I will, I'll do the bottom of the foot separate actually. I'm just control click on each edge here and uh, hitting break. And what I will do is this little inner flank. Uh, I could, well, we'll see how we get on for it. I might need to cut this into two separate pieces, but we'll see how we get on with one. In fact, no, I will cut it into two separate pieces, and I'll tell you why just shortly. So select all that inside, hit brick, and now do we have everything we want? Oh, I missed one. Break the brick. Select this bottom piece. Brick. On the left here. Double click to select that whole thing. Select you and brick. So this left piece I'm going to keep as one. Or sorry, this outer, outer side of the leg I'm going to keep as one. The inner side of the leg now, I'm actually going to just go in around here and break this off as well. And I'll show you why in a little second. Uh, let me see. I'm going to take this front section now here. So let me grab you. It's really odd that I have to do this. I have to move it. And I actually have to select a polygon in the UV window rather than out here in order to select the whole thing. Wait a minute. That's not right at all. That should not be right. Uh, do you know what? It's fine. I can live with it. I don't remember putting a seam there. Oh, unless I'm a double click. Okay. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, straighten. There we go. Straightened out. And relax until flat. Okay, perfect. Take you. That's that little front section. That is lovely. That's all we have there. Straighten out. Relax until flat. Give it a few seconds. Again, nothing too, uh, nothing too deadly here. We haven't seen in a couple of videos before. Oh, that's a bit weird. Let's rotate it that now. Uh, what I'll do is I just grab the corners here. Sorry, this little bottom edge. Straighten you out a bit, and I'll straighten you again. 
No lights until four. Okay, so because I fixed it and then I straightened it, it's getting rid of that little um, curve in it. So again, something you need to click these and click back and forth on them, do a bit of rotation. Eventually, you'll get the right result. So uh, what I'll do is reason why I separated this little part is because this is going to be our inside hip that we're never actually going to see. We're, we're only rarely going to see the inside of the leg, whenever the two legs are separate, whenever he's walking or whatever, but we're never actually going to see this inner circle. Uh, so I've broken that off. I want to straighten that out, relax until it's flat. There you are. What I can do is, because I'm trying to save texture space and squeeze everything in, some things kind of more priority than others. Uh, in general, we want everything to be roughly scaled the same size on our final, uh, final texture here. But certain elements like this, this is quite a big piece of our model, and it's actually going to be invisible. We're never ever ever going to see this, so it doesn't need a lot of texture space. So we can actually take this and shrink it way down. Uh, even if the front of the leg is this size, we can make this a lot smaller. That'll just save us some texture space. And when it comes to packing it all in together, we might be able to save a couple of uh, pixels or save a little bit of space that can be better utilized by some more prominent, like these big polygons here. Uh, so let me see, we can just uh, grab this guy now. I'll pull him out of the way. What's that I've just grabbed? Oh, that's that. Come here with me. I'll just straighten you and relax you. Take your time. There we go. Wait a minute, what? No, didn't actually do that. There we go, perfect. So again, these are all coming up sort of slightly different sizes. We'll, we'll, we'll do our, at the end, our little rescale element. Select everything and rescale. Uh, we'll do that at the end. Um, click you. In fact, we'll click this whole bit here. Move it out of the way. Scaling doesn't look too bad, but we'll just uh, relax until it's flat anyway. There's a lot of relax until flat, it's kind of the longest process because you can see it takes a few seconds each time we do it. But we're nearly done anyway. I'm going to finish up this one piece and then I'll do the rest off camera. Oh, look at you, you're not good at all. Okay, straight selection, relax until flat. There we go. Uh, let me see this, this piece here. Is this our last remaining? No, we've got the inside on the outside. Okay, come on. Come with me. There we go. Oh, that's tough lot. This is a bit more of a complex shape, so the relax might take a little bit longer. It might not even give us a good result at all. Oh, actually, there, that's not too bad. Shrunk way down, though. I don't know why it shrunk way down. What we'll do is we will just manually rotate that, eyeball it until it's nice. And we'll turn off our angle snaps as well. Just fine tune that. Get it nice. And I'm not worried about resizing it now, we can rescale at the end. And just take you, this our last little section here. Actually, just grab all of that. Now, because we have this little bend here, uh, this looking at a right angle and this curve, it might not straighten out just as well as we would like. Yeah, you see, we're getting this little effect here. Don't like that. <laughs> Might actually just break this little section off and it's only separate thing. Again, we're never ever ever going to see these polygons in here. So we don't need to be too precious with them, but I'll select that, hit break. And now, now if I try to straighten this, it should be a lot nicer. We'll just straighten you. I'm not worried about rescaling you or anything. You're okay. But this guy now, if I straighten selection and relax until whoa, even worse. Yuck. Okay, let's try quick peel instead. Far better. So yeah, if you relax, if you're straight and relaxed, don't work. Quick peel uh, will also give us a nice result. And then we just want to move that. We'll use this line just to kind of get as straight as possible. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. We'll call that done. Now that we have everything here, grab all of these. Rescale elements together, and then we just have to 
packing correctly. Now again, that one is that inside one. Let me just scale you up because we don't really need it. I will just play with these and get them nice. So I'm going to pause the video now and maybe unwrap these a bit further. Uh, then we will come back uh, towards the end. Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, just to wrap up this little video here. So you can see here now that I've went ahead and unwrapped a few more of these pieces just to um, give them a bit of a tidier unwrap. Now you'll see there, we're still quite efficient in terms of our texture space. In this instance, it didn't save as much more space. Um, this was more just a demonstration to show you how to unwrap if you're not already familiar with it. Now I won't lie to you, I won't mislead you. I got bored halfway through, I didn't do the second leg, I didn't touch the hips, I didn't touch the hands, I've just left them exactly as they are um, because it's 11pm and I want to go to bed. So this, uh, this is good enough. I uh, have good texture coverage there, good, um, good texture packing. We can see there the arms are looking a little better uh, and the head as well. We've now got this whole section here for the head, it's been straightened out nicely just with a single wee uh, seam down the back. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that is good enough for an unwrap. So I'm just going to go back to top level. And at this point, uh, we are good enough that we can export this, ready to start texturing in Substance Painter. So I've set it to the origin point. I've applied a material. Uh, I did it at the start of the video, but I'll show you again just to make sure that we are all good. Now, I've stretched this out double width here, but there's nothing else uh, changed. I literally just grabbed that to give me two columns instead of one. Just it's easier for the unwrapping and we can see everything at once. Um, but uh, what we want to do is hit the reset transform scale. Reset transform scale. Don't see any changes there, but that's grand. We shouldn't. Select everything. And we'll just go to File, Export, Export Selected. And I'll just save this to my desktop. And we will call this uh, Lego Fig Low Poly Unwrapped. Uh, yeah, that's grand. And save that. Our little FBX window should come up again based on the previous window. Turbo Smooth is deactivated. Uh, not that it'll matter now, we've actually collapsed down the arms uh, when we duplicated them, so the Turbo Smooth is, isn't relevant anymore. Um, so we just hit OK, and that's exported that. Well, it will do in a second. There we go. That's exported that. Uh, in the next part of the video, we'll go into Substance Painter and do some more fun stuff, actually texturing this. I know the unwrapping is kind of boring, not the most interesting thing to watch, but it is very important to learn how to do it right. So hopefully you learned something uh, just from watching me do those couple of pieces. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I will see you for the next video. So thank you very much, guys. And good night.